Hey everybody, welcome to Boosted Jeans Riders. This is Rich. And today's video is gonna be about basically some tips or shall I say reminders, things we need to do out here for our safety. And one of them is pulling on the side of the road. Regardless of what's going on with your bike, maybe it's the bike, maybe it's that you need to fix something on your helmet, but pulling on the side of the road is one of those dangerous things. So let's talk about the first one right now. What are things you do not ever wanna do like right now? where I'm riding around this corner, you do not want to pull over directly beyond a corner, especially if it's, if it's a blind curve. Like this one coming up right now, it's a blind curve. As I complete this, if I need to pull over, I do not want to pull over right here. What I can do is utilize this driver right here. The second one is basically go with the first one. Try to find a straight area before you pull over. That way, you can look and see traffic coming from a distance. Okay, the next tip would be, well, let me get around this corner. And I specifically chose this road for this video because I know it is a great location to pull over to demonstrate what I'm gonna do. I'm getting off the bike, gonna talk about a few safety things, the things that you need to be carrying on your bike also. So here, now that I'm looking for a location to pull over, which here is not a great location for me, looking for a location to pull over, I want to put my turn signal on well ahead of time. And once I find a great location, which I see up here, I want to put my emergency blinkers on. This is one of the things we do, put your emergency signals on immediately as you're pulling over. Next thing we want to make sure that we have a nice level ground because if it's contoured and going on a decline, you put your side stand down, your bike may not tilt over as much as it need to. So that's the things you want to keep in mind on that also. Now that I find a good location, let me talk about this right quick. Where I am now, from the limit line, this white line, fog line, limit line, whatever you choose to call it, call it I can still get over a little bit more. So I'm just going to get over just a little bit more right here. Now, I'm not too much concerned about the, the mud and debris and all that because my concern for our safety is traffic coming from the rear. So I'm checking my mirrors 100% of the time. And at this time, I wanna talk about dismounting. If you haven't seen our mounting and dismounting video, make sure you check that because we cover mounting from the right and dismounting from the right side, or excuse me, left side. And we also cover it from the right side. But when you're out on the road, you want to dismount from the right side. Common sense is because of safety, traffic coming towards us. So I'm going to get off the bike and change the camera angle to show you exactly what I'm talking about, about a few things. So it says there's no traffic here, and I picked this road because it's not too much traffic, but obviously you guys can see humans kind of destroying this road with all the garbage and debris that they got on the road. But let me dismount the bike. In this case, I will dismount on my right side. You know, you see police officers dismount on the right side all the time. And one of the main reasons is traffic safety and tactical reasons when they pull a vehicle over. But that's not what it's about. So let me take the helmet off and get the mic, the, the camera on. Okay, now that we're off the bike, we're gonna discuss what we need to be doing next. And obviously this part I'm gonna discuss now is if you're gonna be on the side of the road for a considerable amount of time, like changing a tire, doing some repairs on your motorcycle, things like this. This is very, very important for your safety. Have some kind of traffic markers. I don't care what they are. Just have some kind of traffic markers. Cake and I actually carry, and I don't have it with me today. Let me see, let me check. Nope, we actually carry those cheap, cheap safety vests. The highway orange and a bright yellow safety vest and we'll put it on the back of our bike if you're gonna be there for a little while. That's one thing you can do. The next thing you can do is carry the little MSF cones. You set cones up in a pattern, a wedge pattern, so when vehicles come in, they can know that something's there. We really don't do that because the thing that we carry 100% of the time on our bike are, yes, traffic flares. Think about it. Every time there's a traffic flare now, the thing that you think about more than anything else more than anything else is an accident. 
you start slowing down immediately. So when you pull alongside the road, like I say, if you're gonna be a considerable amount of time, you wanna put some type of markers down. And another thing you can do, the international signal that you may need help, place your helmet on the road a little further down. So especially other bikers who knows this, they see it, they say, okay, this person may need some help. Place your helmet out. And if you do have a safety vest, put your safety vest right by the helmet. That way that eye could be caught. And always, as I mentioned before, which I don't have on, keep on your hazards. Because motion, flashing, movement, everything, all these things catches the eye. If you're just sitting on your bike waiting for a tow truck or somebody to help, still, I'm telling you, still try to do a lot of movement so people can actually see it. Okay, like I mentioned traffic flares. You can buy traffic flares on Amazon, go to the local Walmart, any traffic store, and they are simple, easy to use. You just strike it, put one out there. You don't need 20, 30 flares, maybe one or two flares out there. Some of them go 15 minutes. There are some flares that will go 30 minutes. And just put them out there so people can see it. But don't forget, when it's time to leave, put out the flares. <laughs> Must be a motorcyclist, he waves. <laughs> Normally people don't wave in vehicles and motorcycles on the side. But I guess they can see I'm not broke down. They probably see the camera right here. Anyway, we're gonna go on with a couple things. So, knowing I'm not gonna cover everything, all you experienced riders, all these riders with seat time, make sure to put some comments in a comment section to help each other out. Another thing you wanna be conscious of, especially if you're riding with more than one rider. The rear rider, make sure that they put their hazards on also, and they're aware of all these things that we're talking about. So don't forget to share this video. There's no need for you to sit on the bike. Now, if you can do it safely, that's fine. Get away from the bike. Go back to where you got the pattern set up. Create some movement. Things that people can see and they're aware of. There's a lot of, like a Corvette just passed there. One kid just coming flying up and down here doing like 90 miles an hour. A lot of traffic today, way more than I was expecting, but they all going in one direction, which is good for me to do this video. If you're gonna be out on the road, maybe to fix your glasses, your helmet, chest strap, whatever, then you don't need all these extra things out there. Now, this one is important because this involves getting back on your bike and taking off. One of the things is a lot of us, by force of habit, get on our bikes on the left side. However, just like this mounting on the right side, this is where you want to mount on the right side going up. And one thing I didn't mention, yes, you want to be on a straightaway, but you want to have enough room so when you're going back into traffic, back into traffic, you can actually throttle through and haul butt at the floor of traffic or whatever the speed limit is, that way cars don't run up on you behind you. This is why you want to have a long stretch, if possible. None of this is absolute, so it's possible a long stretch. Going back into traffic is not the time you want to practice your slow skills. No, that isn't the time you want to practice your slow skill. You want to throttle up and really haul butt to get back into traffic. Here's another tip, tools. Tools on your bike, where should you carry your tools? Just like anything else, it's all about safety. It make a lot of common sense. If you have saddlebags, carry your tools in your right saddlebag. The less you can be on this side, the more safety you will be. Just wanna throw some things out there for your safety. You know, it's riding season coming back for most of you. Fortunately, here in California, we don't really have a riding season. We get to ride all year round. We just want to bring some reminders to you guys, and this is why I'm doing this video. So that's all I have for right now. I just want to keep the video relatively short, but if you got anything that you can actually help us out, share this video. Go back and watch it again. Do not forget to watch the video about mounting and dismounting, especially, especially if you have a big bike. And this will help you when you're parking on side of the road. That's all I have for now, but if you're out riding, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. I'm Boosie Jeans Riders, I'm Rich, and I'm out. Peace.